I want you to know that we are on location, and I'm really pleased, actually more than pleased, I'm kind of excited to sit down with, watch this one, Giulio? Ricciarelli. See how perfectly I said that? <laughs> more importantly, he is the director of an amazing film called Labyrinth of Lies. It's being released by Sony Classics, so you can find it on their site or probably on Fandango or your local art house theater. Welcome. I know it's not Tuesday and we're on location. It's a secret location because yes. we can't tell anybody where we really go. Okay. But Thank I wanted you. to know. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited. God pleasure. What's a nice Italian guy doing in the German film industry? <laughs> I'm actually, I have an Italian father. I was born in Italy, but when I was four, I have an, a German mother. My father packed up the family and we moved to Germany. So basically, I, I'm both, and I grew up in Germany. I've seen your film. I've been moved by your film. Where in the world did you find the story? I mean, I, I know, this is what I heard, that the German government did put money up or tell you, why are they willing to let their dark past out? Interestingly, I think today, and I grew up in a German school system, the German government and society as a whole has a, has a very clear intent to educate the young people about what happened in the Holocaust. It's part of our curriculum in schools. Mm -hmm. Every student goes to visit a camp. Uh, we make a lot of films about it, and it's part of our culture. But all this started basically around the beginning of the 60s with the Auschwitz trial, what our movie's about, and with the Eichmann trial. That was, of course, also very much, you know, in the public eye. And the amazing thing is that the Auschwitz trial is one of the forgotten <coughs> trials of the Holocaust. And this enormously important event for German history, I think for demo demo democracies all over the world, the first time a government actually put his own people on trial for what happened, um, this trial is forgotten or was forgotten. Before I started working on the film, from 1945 till about 1968, so 23 years of German history were hazy in my, in my consciousness. I didn't have a true idea of what happened. And, and the truth is for almost 18 years, the German government, the, the, all of society, I mean, you must imagine, the people who were actually in power during the Third Reich, they were not gone. They were still in, all in the institutions. So for almost 18 years, they tried everything in their power to suppress it, to deny it, to sweep it under the rug. We're really talking about a handful of individuals going against society's grain. Why did this particular story, do you think, stay underground for so long? The more I, I study history, the less I have explanations. You know, you never, <laughs> history is like, is like a thing so, that you notice. But I, th I have a theory, and I think okay. the theory is that in a way, we like to tell ourselves the story that, you know, like I said, th this, the story we tell ourselves is, okay, it happened, the Holocaust happened, it was horrible, but then immediately, you know, we woke up and we started dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Because that's easier to say, you know, it happened, and then we all tried to act as if nothing happened, and we basically had a young generation growing up who never heard of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think to face that, there's also, that's also hard to face, I think, and and, um, you know, Fritz Bauer and these prosecutors, they are, you know, they are heroes in, and they should be, they should have their part in the history books, you know, they should have their place in German history as people who really benefited the country. Yeah. And that hasn't happened and I, maybe we can make a small contribution. Just one quick question, what's yes. the reaction in Germany to the film? A very positive, I must say. Everybody's surprised, that's, uh, you know, every, and everybody says, well, I thought I, I knew everything and I'd seen every film about it and suddenly there's a film that brings a n whole new aspect of history and, you know, the movie's traveling. I'm very grateful for that experience. I'm very That's grateful great. that we had you here on our secret shooting day. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. We'd pleasure. love to tell people where we are, but then we'd have to kill you. So. Yes, right. Oh, yeah. No. But we're going to be back. <laughs> I and I was actually brought here with a, with a black bag over my head, so <laughs> I want you to know that. I know. Welcome to the United States. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What state are we in? <laughs> oh, we can't tell you that. <laughs> oh, either. not even that. No. But we will okay. be back after these messages. Meine Damen und Herren, ein Jurist, in dessen gepanzerter Brust das zarte Flämmchen der Menschlichkeit noch nicht völlig erlaubt. Danke.
Ich überprüfe die Vergangenheit. Er war eine Nazi. Okay, du bist zu jung. Ihr wart alle Nazis. Auschwitz, schon mal gehört? Nein. Nein, und ich muss weiter. Dieses Land will Zuckerguss. Das will die Wahrheit nicht wissen. Ich brauche die Akten der SS-Männer, die in Auschwitz gedient haben. Alle. Und das erste Mal, dass ein Land seine eigenen Soldaten für etwas anklagt, was im Krieg passiert ist. Was wir hier erreichen werden, ist alte Wunden aufzureißen. So ein Prozess wäre Gift. Dieses Totschweigen ist Gift. Ich will deine Hilfe. Wir haben keine Zeit, verstehen Sie? Wollen Sie, dass sich jeder junge Mensch in diesem Land fragt, ob sein Vater ein Mörder ist? Ja, genau das will ich. Ich will, dass diese Lügen und dieses Schweigen endlich aufhören. Auf das Leben nach Heim. Hi, welcome back. We're very excited now to be interviewing Alexander Feeling from Labyrinth of Lies from Sony Classics. And you'll also be able to see uh, Alex very soon on Homeland as Claire Dane's lover. You're doing a film about the past, mm -hmm. which was kind of a secret past. I mean, because we didn't have the technology then that people didn't even know what was going on. What surprised you when making this film? What surprised you when you started with the script? Let's skip the film. Yeah, Let's I mean... Let's start with the script. Yeah, I was not aware of that long struggle uh, Germany had to, 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 to get to terms with the past, I have to say. And I, when I read the script and I called Julio and I said, this is pretty strong material. Uh, is it possible to, to tell the story like that? I mean, isn't he, talking about the main character, isn't he a little bit too naive and too, too much without any knowledge? So I couldn't believe that, actually. It was like, and, and then he said, yeah, this is actually what the film is about. This is a very brave man. It had nothing to do with physical bravery, as it had to do, I felt, with emotional bravery. Yeah, um, well, just well I mean, action. it's always individuals in the end, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's that, I think that, that's it. It's every institution. Right, because I thought, when you said brave, I said, wow, yeah, I mean, in the end of the story, he's, he becomes, it, we, I mean, he's in the beginning of the story, he's a young, young man who seems to know what is right and what is wrong. But and that's who all is guilty he and That's all he knows. He seems to know, right, yeah. And who's but guilty. he is naive. I think he had to be naive or he wouldn't have tackled something that was totally impossible. That's absolutely true. But in the end, yeah, he, he arrives at a certain humility and a certain kind of dignity where he understands that things are way more complicated than he thought they will be. Putting yourself into this role in that period of time, were you able to, when they called cut, step out of it or did it weigh heavily on you through the whole production? I can't switch on and off emotion. Okay. I mean, these are emotions. It's right. not It's not a machine, right? So. So it always takes me away to get there, and, and it always takes me away, uh, 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 takes a little time to, 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 to lose it again. I think sometimes people think that, that the atmosphere while we were shooting must have been similar to the, to the atmosphere in the movie, but it, but it isn't, and it wasn't, and it would be a mistake, because... because it's still a film. It is still a film, and you know, if, if, if we would have been affected personally all the time while shooting the film, I think the audience would not have been affected. You know, it's it's sure. about it's about the audience. I'm doing something, and the audience you is brought them along. Yeah, right. I think. Yeah, I think so. Most people want to hide their past. I mean, this is a country. But we did for for many, many, many years. So, so this is another. Thing. We went through different phases, I think. And uh, so, as a young German, how mm -hmm. do you feel about all this? The First same. of all, we don't feel pride. You don't. No, we are not, and this is a this is one of the results out of our past. We, you you guys are very. Uh, there is a certain patriotism which is very 
it, it's very usual, right, in America. Even people who criticize the system or, or, or where the country is going to, they are, in, they are really, mm -hmm. I'm not about like, yeah, we are the greatest, that's not patriotism for me, but, but they're, really, they're really proud of their nationality and their nation, na national identity. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that, we, we don't really have that. We don't really have it. I mean, I personally don't think they're, why, why, sh why should I be proud <laughs> living in one country? I don't know why. So, but this is, this is, this is, um, this is uh, one of the results um, of this horrible thing, of this horrible past. Julio said something interesting, is that since both of you studied this in school, mm -hmm. you just didn't study that part of it. I think it has something to do with trauma. So I think people, when you're traumatized, and, and, the, and the weird, really crazy thing is that not only the victims are kind of traumatized, but everyone involved is traumatized, mm -hmm. maybe without even knowing. I know you're proud of this film, because it really is. It, what we opened before you came here, it wasn't just an interesting film, it's a moving film. I mean, you entertained me. You also took me by the hand, and in a very nice way, let me see what human beings can do mm -hmm. when they make up their mind to do something. Mm -hmm. And and I, I know, I think no matter when it was set, whenever somebody stands up and tries to right a wrong, there is this positive effect that will last for a longer time than just the moment of when they did it. And you have to be proud of being in a film like that. This is good. Thank you. I mean, it was just it's <laughs> great entertainment. Though I noticed the sex scenes were pretty mild. I was very surprised. They didn't have sex in 58. You've I, been disappointed? Yeah, I would have been. <laughs> She's explored the subject more than some. <laughs> well, when you look like this, you know, there should be more of you with less on. So. There's very little of you with less on. There's some scenes, but I would mm. have liked more. It's okay. it's okay. She's 80. It's all bark, no bite. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. I enjoyed and, it. And congratulations. <laughs> thank you. On Labyrinth Labyrinth of Lies Lies. And thank on Homeland. Thanks it's for having a, me. Absolutely. And, you know, you definitely have to come back and join us again and keep us appraised of everything you're doing. Sure, I will. All right. And we're now at that time of our show where, Reba, you get to say your line. It's a wrap.